this is the year 2015. Book of Job, chapter 28, in the Message Bible, if I can do it. Do we have the Message Bible available? I want to read this whole chapter to you because I want to show you something. Here's, here's what the Bible says. Ready? We all know how silver seems the rocks. We've seen the stuff from which gold is refined. We're aware how iron is dug out of the ground and copper is smelted from rock. Miners penetrate the earth's darkness, searches the roots of the mountain for ore, digging away in the suffocating darkness. Far from civilization, far from the traffic, they cut a shaft and they lowered into it by ropes. Earth's surface is a field of grain, but its depths are a forge, firing sapphires from the stone and chiseling gold from rocks. Vultures, now watch this. This is why prosperity, listen, vultures are blind to its riches. Hawks never lay eyes on it. Wild animals are oblivious to it. Lions don't know it's there. Miners hammer away at the rock. They uproot the mountains. They tunnel through the rock and find all kind of beautiful gems. They discover the origin of rivers and bring earth's secrets to light. But where, oh, where will they find wisdom? Think about that for a moment. Talking about gold and sapphire and, and lions and vultures and hawks. Don't even know. They're oblivious to the spirit of wisdom. Only creature on the earth that can possess wisdom is you. Not one animal desires wisdom, doesn't need wisdom. They live according to the laws of jungles and predators and prey. But you are made in the image of God. And boy, I was reading this other day. I got, you should read this whole book in the, in the Message Bible. But where, oh, where will they find wisdom? Watch what it says. Where does insight hide? Mortals don't have a clue. Have it the slightest idea where to look. Earth depths say, it's not here. Ocean deeps echo, never heard of it. It can't be bought with the finest gold. No amount of silver can get it. Even famous Orphur gold can't buy it. Let me tell you what this word orphur means. It means go, even all the gold in Fort Knox can't buy wisdom. Now talking about knowledge, we become a people who are knowledge hungry, but we got people who have a whole lot of knowledge and very little wisdom. Talking about wisdom, say wisdom. This is God talking to Job. Even the famous Orpher gold can't buy it. Not even diamonds and sapphires. Neither gold nor emeralds are comparable. Extravagant jewelry can't touch it. Let me tell you something else about this Orpher gold. All of Solomon's wealth, 95% of Solomon's wealth came from Orpher gold from Ethiopia. Three times a year they would bring gold as much as Fort Knox to, to Solomon's house as offering. Can you believe that? That's pretty bad, isn't it? Look, it says, neither gold nor emeralds are comparable. Extravagant jewelry can't touch it. Pearl necklaces, ruby bracelets, why bother? None of this is even a down payment on wisdom. Look up here. We're seeking houses. We seek cars. We're trying to become famous. We're, trying to, we're doing everything we think we need to do. And God said not even any of this can be a down payment for wisdom. Pile gold and African diamonds as high as you will. And they can't hold a candle to wisdom. So where does wisdom come from? Where does insight live? Can't be found by looking no matter how deep you dig, no matter how high you fly. And if you search through the graveyard and question the dead, they'd say, we've only heard rumors of it. God alone knows the way to the wisdom. He knows the exact place to find it. He knows where everything is on the earth. He sees everything under heaven. 
After he commanded the winds to blow and measured out the waters, arranged for, for the rain to set off explosions of thunders and lightnings, he focused on wisdom. When God finished creation, he focused on wisdom. Think about this. When God finished all of his work, then he put his attention on what? Wisdom. He made sure it was all set and tested and ready. And then he addressed the human race. And here's what he says. Fear of the Lord. That's wisdom. And insight means shunning evil. Look up here. You want wisdom? You're going to find it in one place. That you build a healthy fear for God. And that you start hating evil on the earth. Because that's wisdom. Now, I was sitting in my, I've learned how to move my subconscious mind before I go to bed. And I want to train all of y'all to get a hold of your mind. Your mind is your battlefield. Your mind is your world. And I saw, God told me to take 2015 and multiply it. And I multiplied 2015, which equaled 300. And so I began to study in December 28, 29, when I went to uh, Living Faith International Church, which, by the way, a couple, a couple of just quick junctures here, just the thought. Uh, I'm excited because Monday, was it Monday, Richie? Monday, I sat, me and Richie, with the architect, and we hired the architect. Uh, He sent the contract today. He, uh, he came in at 57000 I talked him down 10 more thousand. We, we came in at 47000 for the whole thing. And so uh, he's drawing it up. So within the next 20, 30 days, we're going to go to the bank. We believe we're going to start putting a shovel. I believe we're going to have us a great groundbreaking by the end of February. How many believe that beginning of March? Oh, my God. Give God some praise. It's going to be, a, it's, it's possible. It's, it's, it, nothing's impossible with God, is it? And we're going to move out on that land. And I was already talking to the architect about we also want to sit down and we want to do, draw. We're going to draw a daycare up. And when we, within the first 12 months on that land, we're going to start building a 6,000 square foot. That's what we're believing God for and building a off on the uh, backside over there. Uh, because they're gonna they're gonna stub the whole road all the way in where the circle drive is gonna be. It's gonna it's gonna be awesome. It, it's gonna be. Uh, I was in when Pastor and I were in Hilton Hilton Wine Village. And we saw all these hotels, Jeremy. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? All these shops and and I looked around and I mean, it's like eight. Well, how many hotels you think? Six or seven pools, hotels. And so I went in there and I asked the guy, I said, hey, how many acres you guys got this uh, Hawaiian village on? He said, 22 acres. And I walked out there and the Holy Spirit said, Tur turn around huh? 360. And I turned all the way around. He said, that's what you could put on your land right here. Whew. 21 and a half acres. I got excited. I, you might not get excited, but I'm kingdom and I want to see kingdom be extravagant again. Amen? And so we're going to do that. And outside, I was telling the architect, said, we're going to be able to have our kids. I believe our kids will be able to play outside again and have basketball and have volleyball. And, you know, we just were just so imprisoned to this building. It just is just such a rough neighborhood. We don't want none of our kids to run out there. And the road is right here. And if you go in the park, you've got to clean out needles and condoms. I mean, it's terrible. And so, but we moving out. And then we coming back to bring people out with us, ain't, ain't we? Amen. I declared war. I declared war. I told the devil Sunday morning, said, so you coming after my daughter? I said, you can't have her in the name of Jesus. You can act like you want her. You can act like you got her. But in the faith of God, you don't have her. Amen. And then I said, now I'm coming after all of yours in Jesus' name. And we're going into the ghetto. We're going into the streets, the highways and byways. And we're going to rip the devil off of all the people he thought was his soldiers and generals. Amen. Drug dealers going to become millionaires and become legal in the kingdom of God. Somebody shout glory. I didn't write the book for nothing. Warfares we must win. We're going to win this warfare. Amen. My daughter will be sitting here with her hands lifted up. Singing in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. And you're going to help me do it. But 
God told me to sow this $300 seed, and I made a covenant. As soon as I got back, I was going to sow this $300 seed. And, but I was studying on $300, and, and I want to challenge you to become a seed sower. I want to challenge you to become a seed sower. Don't let somebody talk you out of prosperity. If man had never sinned, we'd still be preaching prosperity. God is a prosperous God. The scripture for this year, you need to put it on your refrigerator. You need to put it on your doorpost. You need to hang it somewhere. Psalm 65, 11 in the New King James. Write it. This God's going to crown this year with his goodness. That word goodness is favor. And look, that we walk on the paths that are dripping with abundance. How many want this year to be the year that abundance just drips off of you everywhere you go? Hallelujah. I was talking to a woman today. Uh, her name is Ventress, and I met her. Why? Because I was at a restaurant a month ago or a little over a month ago. Leave that scripture up. I love that scripture. That's going to be our theme for 2015, that right there. This is the year he's going to crown us with favor. Amen? Ooh, how many want to drip with abundance like I'm going to drip? I was at the market on Main, and I saw her sitting there by herself, and, and, and I kept looking at her feeling bad, and all of a sudden I said, boy, I hate seeing people eat by herself. And the Holy Spirit said, well, why don't you buy her lunch then? See, that's dripping with abundance. You know why? People, many people are willing, but they ain't able. I want to become able to do what I'm willing. Amen? And so I went over and bought, her, and I bought it and paid for a tip and walked by there, and I told her, I said, listen, God told me that he favored you today, and I bought your lunch and paid your tip. And she started getting all excited. I, I knew she was Pentecostal, man. She said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I said, well, praise the Lord. She said, I was just sitting here telling God how much I love him, and all by herself now, and saying how much I, I appreciate him. And he said, I know you love me, and I love you too. He said, listen, I love you so much. Your meal's on me today. That's what God told her. And she said, so I was sitting here looking around. There wasn't nobody in the, in the restaurant. She said, you walked up and paid for my meal. And I got excited because when I went in the car, I said, Lord, you trusted me to buy her meal. I was the only guy in the restaurant. And he made a covenant with her. I'm going to buy your meal and knew that I wouldn't say no because I want to be dripping. Oh, Hallelujah. With abundance. Now, I'll talk to her today. She called today, Pastor. She's going to be calling you. She says, I want to join the church because this is the best church I've ever been in in this city. She's been coming ever since that day. Now, I didn't witness to her. I didn't tell her to repent. I didn't tell her to get saved. I just dripped that path on her table. And now she's going to this church, going to be joining the membership of this house. How many want to do that too? Well, then, listen to me. You've got to become a seed sower you got to become Johnny Appleseed everywhere you go you sow a seed something kindness mercy money it's not always money smile sow seeds of joy sow seeds of mercy quit judging people quit black and white and everybody to death you, you know you live your life in color and expect everybody else to live in black and white Everything's a seed. Say this, everything I do is a seed for something else. God is so passionate about the seed when I wrote this book. This, this is the first rendition. I didn't write anything about the harvest or seed. God woke me up in the middle of the night and he said, you not finished this book. I said, yes, yeah, finished. It's, it's already been printed. I printed 50 of them. He said, you haven't finished it, son. You didn't write warfare about harvests. And I was so stirred, I woke up the next day, and he said this to me, Satan doesn't fear your seed. He fears your harvest. And God started talking to me, Jeremy, and he said, Satan has no inclination, wisdom, or understanding of sowing and reaping. I'm not, not one angel understands the word harvest. Only you do. He said, and Satan, I told Satan in Genesis, it'll be my seed that crushes your head. And he, God told me in prayer, he said to me, when Satan was at the cross, he was laughing at God. He assumed he had won because Jesus did what? He died. But he doesn't understand the law of the seed. See, he thought Jesus was going to crush his head. He didn't realize he was the seed of the head crushers. Because when he died, the harvest came next. 
Woo, hallelujah. And the harvest is you and I. And now we've been given all authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. We're crushing his head. You ought to stomp your feet right where you are and say, I'm a head crusher. I'm a devil crusher. I'm the harvest of that seed. I came in. Jeremy, you can come on the piano. I'm ready to go. I came in and sat down in one hour and wrote the whole last chapter, next to the last chapter. It's, and you'll get in the new book. It's back there with this chapter, Warfare Over Your Harvest. You win this, you'll be the wealthiest person on the earth. You're not going to sow if you don't have wisdom. You're either going to love what you have or love what you want. Believe God for your harvest or love what you have. What I want from God is way bigger than what I have from him right now. I asked the architect, what's it going to cost? He said, well, I think a million too. We don't have a million too, but God does. They told us we couldn't buy land. We bought 21 and a half acres. And it's debt-free land. We don't own a dollar on it. They said we couldn't buy a building. We got a 30,000 square foot building coming, a two-story building. That was $400,000. We paid 165000 for it. They say we can't move. They're going to keep saying that when they see everything going up over there on the land. They said I couldn't write books. I've written 30 of them. People told me I would never be on TV. I'm on TV all over the nation. You want an enemy to rise up and tell you what you can't do. Why? Because that's the proof. It's been already assigned by God to get it done. You want some naysayer to come up and say, you ain't never going to do it. Because as soon as somebody told you that, God said, is there anything too hard for God? Ha! Glory to God. If the only way you're going to quit is you got, you ought to tell the devil, you, 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 you're going to have to kill me because I ain't quitting. I t- tweeted tonight, I'm in church with the flu. What's your excuse? That's what I tweeted tonight. We're in church. I've got the flu. She's got the flu. We're in church with the flu. But here's my thought. I'm not going to let my condition decide my position. I ain't missing the pulpit in ministry because of sickness. I do it sick and go home laying in bed if I have to. But I have found the ointment of healing has always been in the anointing of obedience. Hallelujah. Everything you desire is achievable when you have wisdom in God. When you do what's right, God does the rest. And then gets the praise. Amen, Rico. You do what's right. Look at them and say, you got to do what's right. I used to teach as a youth pastor, don't do right, don't do the right thing. Do, don't do what's right. Do the right thing, you know. Do the right thing. When you do the right thing, God does the rest. I was riding down the road with Dr. Mike Murdoch. And I was crying about the lack in my house. And there was a lot of it. A lot of lack. We preach prosperity. We preach tithe. But everywhere I turn, I had no money. I, I was a lack, 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 lack. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And I asked him to pray for me. And he looked at me and was with the straightest face. And he said, your problem doesn't require prayer. And I said, it don't? He said, no. He said, lack is the proof. You're doing something wrong. Find out what's out of order. And lack will go away. That's what he told me. He rebuked me. Lack is an indicator, son. Something's out of order in your life. You've not lined yourself up to the word of God. And I said, well, scripturally what? He said, when a man's ways are pleasing to God. Even his enemies are at peace with him. He said money's not a miracle. That's what he told me. Money's not a mystery. 
Money's not an end of a prayer life. Money is attached to obedience, to principles, and to laws. Discover these, and your money will go up. Sit over here and complain about it, and you'll always stay broke. So you know what? I, I coined this thought this year. Many of you are in the flow, but you're not flourishing. I want to make 2015 the year you flourish. Amen? You go look up the word flourish. I'll come back Sunday and tell it to you. But you go look it up. How many want to flourish in everything you do? You don't want to just be in the church. I want to flourish. Okay? Be a seed sower. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Start where you are. $5, $25, $10. You know where you're at. But do it perpetually, continually, every single week. And see how, what keeps growing house. Amen? I'll give you a challenge. If it don't work this year, you never got to sow another seed the rest of your life in this church. That's how bold I can be on this. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap it. What's that we put up there? You crown the year with your... I love that. Is that water? That is cool. Looks like a crown, don't it? Where'd you find that at? Man, I love that. You love that? Well, that's a nice tattoo for somebody. <laughs> Not for me, but for somebody. I get a tattoo, they have to stick it on, you know. <laughs> Marvel comic, Superman, you know, a few days is gone, you know. I went with Pastor Paul to get his tattoo. I was getting nauseous watching him. <clears throat> I felt like I stepped out and said, ah, yeah, I can't do it, man. Then I started getting them all freaked out. I was going, oh, I feel demons in here. I think demons getting in your heart. <laughs> Pastor Paul's over going, man, don't talk like that. I said, whoo, I felt a demon walk by me. I think he's getting up in that blood. He's like, stop that, man. In Jesus' name. Let's sow our seed tonight in faith. Let's be a continuous seed sower. I'm telling you, it works. If it works for me, it's got to work for you. Amen. Amen. God has so blessed me. We're taking our parents to Hawaii in May. My wife and I were walking around Hawaii. Was it last year? Why am I telling you this? Because what happens for me is going to happen for you. We're walking around, around Hawaii. And she says, my mother, I think she said, my mom's lifetime dream is to come to Hawaii. That's what she said. And I said, well, my mama's lifetime dream is just to travel. <laughs> Mimi just, she keeps a ready suitcase, you know. I just say, Mimi, I'm thinking about going to Dauphin. You want to go? Yep, let's go. She's in the back seat like a, like a pet. Let's go. <laughs> so we're walking around, and we just said, you know what? You only live one life. We would waste money on everything else. Let's fulfill. And then I got to thinking, what kind of seed would that be to God? To make somebody's lifetime dream come to pass. Ooh, I couldn't wait to think of the harvest on fulfilling your lifetime dream. So we started making a plan and I booked the hotels. Well, I will. I'm going to tell you a story for you. So you see, let me tell you this story. Past, pastor Bob. Pastor's dad, Bob. He ain't no pastor. Pastor dad's Bob. Pat, well, Pastor's dad, Bob, Mr. Bob. He was raised in such poverty. He was raised in such lack that giving is a real struggle for him. And he'll do anything for you, but to get money and to give it, whew, he, there better be six angels and 30 Holy Ghost moves. And then he, you know, but he's watching, uh, was it Benny Hinn? He's watching Pastor Benny Hinn on TV, and he said the anointing was so strong. And he said, Benny Hinn was talking about in 30 days, there's going to be a, a miracle in your house. Somebody's going, something's going to bless you. He calls the number on the screen and sows the seed. Never had his whole life has ever done it. How old's your daddy? Six something years old. Never in his whole life has ever called the number and sowed on the, on the TV. Okay? 30 days go by. 30 days on the 30th day. Right? Mary Ann walks in the house with no reason at all. Walks in and was talking and says, listen, 
Jerry and I have decided to take you and mom and pay for everything to Hawaii. Okay? And he don't think about it. He's just like, really? Oh, you know how Bob is. And we're not talking about, we're talking about this expensive. And we ain't staying in the Motel 6. We ain't sticking them all in one room. Tell them, when y'all want something to eat, get the crackers off the cart out in the, car, out in the hall. You in Hawaii, don't say nothing. You're fasting seven days. Oh, no, we're going to do it right. And he went to bed and he said, well, I guess my seed didn't work. Didn't he say that to himself? And he said, and the Holy Spirit said, what? Did your daughter not just tell you that she's taking you to Hawaii? And paying for it. And he got all excited over that, didn't he? God fulfilled that seed promise in 30 days. How many want God to do something for you? You got to do what you, if you want something you've never done, do something. If you want something you never had, do something you've never done. Amen? So get your seed envelope, sow your offerings, do them as God leads you. No pressure, no twisting your arm. I was on call today telling people to sow a $65 seed on the Psalm 6511 and wrapping that around their faith. You can do it watching. You can sow it. Uh, sow it online. It'll come through PayPal. You sow it here. You can sow it on your credit card. But, in the, but don't leave and not sow something. You want to lay offerings in the hand of the king. Okay? Let's hold it up. Let's pray for it. Father, we all pray for every seed sower in this house, every seed sower watching by way of the Internet. God, we thank you that we're able to sow into the kingdom, but what's more powerful than the seed is what's been assigned on the other side of it, the harvest. God, faith is what we require to sow, but to reap, we must shift from faith to expectation. As soon as they lay this seed in the soil, we'll not think about it no more, Holy Ghost but we will start anticipating its return to our house in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Stand to your feet, hug somebody. You can either bring your seed up here or an usher will be standing in the back by the door with an offering bucket to receive your seed on the way out. Don't ever enter the kingdom without a seed. Roland, you have the bucket back there, one of the offerings. Make sure you hold it up where people can see it on the way out or you can bring it here online. You can sew online. Right there's the, the button. You'll see it. Click on it. If you're paying your tithes, let us know if it's your tithes because they go in two different departments. Uh, if it's your seat or your offering, they go one place. Your tithe comes into the, into the church here. Nothing we do on camera, nothing we do on internet comes out of the budget of this house. It comes all by what you sow and give online. So thank you for being faithful partners around the world. We love you. We look forward to being with you, seeing with you. I'll be at the Wisdom Center in February. So all the Wisdom Center partners, I'll be there with, with Dr. Murdoch. So we love you guys. Jeremy, take us away, guys.